Good evening and welcome. Welcome both inside, outside, online. We are just so joyous to be able to spend this Christmas Eve together with everything that has been going on with the COVID and normal sicknesses and illness. Our hearts still go out to those who have loved ones in the hospital, those that have family members at home, our hearts still go out to you, but as we celebrate this Christmas, this Christmas has a reason. It dawned on me this year, just this last week, Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, the Jews are Israel. Wait a minute. Jesus Christ, King of the Jews, is real. Our Lord is real. We need to celebrate as we celebrate his birth. Lord, we just thank you. Let us open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our most precious God, Lord, we just thank you so much that the son you sent to save Israel is real. Lord, undoubtedly, through the scriptures, through other writings, our Christ, our Lord, is real. We have a reason to celebrate. Lord, lift us up today as we lift up the service to you. Lord, we just praise your name. Be with us, watch over us, and Lord, we just thank you in your precious son's name that you sent to us in that tiny manger. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
And the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Please be seated. God sent the angel Gabriel to a city called Nazareth with a message for a young girl. Mary, a virgin, was engaged to Joseph, a descendant of David, and Gabriel appeared Mary was greatly troubled. Gabriel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over The descendants of Jacob forever in his kingdom will never end. Mary replied, but how can this be since I, I'm a virgin. Gabriel answered her and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And for that reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. And there is nothing that God cannot do. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May it happen to me as you have said. Joseph was a man who always did what was right. But when Joseph found out that Mary was pregnant, he didn't want to disgrace her publicly. So he made plans to secretly break off the engagement. While he was thinking about this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, 
Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For according to the prophet, it is by the Holy Spirit that she was conceived. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus, which means God is with us. Because he will save his people from their sins. So when Joseph woke up, he married Mary and knew her not until the birth of her firstborn son. And Joseph named him Jesus. place in Bethlehem, the birthplace of his ancestor, King David, because of the census ordered by Caesar Augustus. When they arrived, there was no room in the inn, so Mary wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger.
were shepherds in that part of the country who were spending the night in the fields taking care of their flocks. An angel of the Lord appeared to the shepherds, and the glory of the Lord shone over them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I am here with good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. This very day in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this is what will prove it to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a multitude of heaven's angels appeared singing praises to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest of heaven and peace on earth to those with whom he is pleased. were gone, the shepherds said to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and saw the baby lying in the manger. When the shepherds saw him, they told Joseph and Mary what the angel had said about the child. Mary remembered all these things and thought deeply about them. When they left, the shepherds sang praises and glorified God for all they had heard and seen. And everyone who heard it wondered at these things. i 
Jesus is real. Let me hear that from the parking lot. If you believe that out in the parking lot uh, this evening, would you let, uh, let us hear your horns tonight so we know you're out there. Anybody outside? Maybe everybody's inside tonight. Maybe they can't hear me outside. But nonetheless, you know, they talk about Christmas as magic. <laughs> Christmas Eve is that one night a year where we, maybe we can call it magic. I don't know. But there's something about this night that's special. Uh, and it's, it's not just about a baby born, but it's about God entering into our world. How many here have been uh, entertained this year so far? You got in the Christmas spirit because you watched a Christmas movie. Anybody? Some of you out there like the old classics, you know, you, 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 you like Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, some of you like It's a Wonderful Life or the Scrooge movie or White Christmas. Uh, others, uh, you're younger, maybe you're more into Christmas with the Cranks uh, or maybe Deck the Halls or one of my favorites, Elf, Christmas Vacation uh, or, or maybe The Grinch. That stole Christmas. How many of you grew up with uh, watching the Grinch that stole Christmas? Now, who would do that? Who on earth would want to steal Christmas? Well, probably someone who had a heart that was two sizes too small, right? And you remember what he did, kids? Uh, that uh, Grinch came down from the mountain where he lived and he went into the city of Whoville and on Christmas Eve he took all of their decorations, he took their trees, he took all of their food and all of their gifts and he went back up on that hill. But when he got to the top, he heard Christmas morning Whoville was singing, they were celebrating. And so he decided, if you can't beat him, I'm going to join him. And so he came right back down off of that mountain. He returned everything and joined in the Christmas celebration. Now, I, you know, I'm doing some thinking, and I have discovered there was actually uh, another Grinch before Dr. Seuss created the Grinch. What are you thinking? You're thinking another Grinch? Do we really have to have another Grinch in the story? Well, we actually do. If you go back to Matthew's gospel, the second chapter with me, in Matthew chapter 2, Matthew was on to another Grinch long before Dr. Seuss created his Grinch. And that Grinch was a man by the name of Herod. Uh, in fact, he was Herod the Great as history knows him, Herod the Great. And so Matthew had already begun to establish in the first chapter of, of the gospel, Jesus' kingship, that Jesus would be king of kings and lord of lords. Uh, and I want you to hear what Matthew has to say. Matthew chapter 2, and I want to begin there with verse 1. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of king, here he is, King Grinch, King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? We saw his star and we've come to worship him. So wise men, magi, came from the east, these kings, they brought their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Tradition has it, maybe there were only three wise men, but I think there were many, many more uh, wise men that showed up in Jerusalem uh, that, that day. But what I want to focus on today is Herod's response. Let's talk about Herod's response for a minute. The Bible tells us that Herod, along with all of Jerusalem, were greatly disturbed. Now, if you know anything about Herod, he was already disturbed before the wise men showed up in uh, Jerusalem. Believe me, uh, this guy was ruthless. If I could describe him with some words, Herod was mad, he was angry, he was jealous, he was envious, he was murderous, he was ruthless. In fact, he was so mean that uh, you just look at the list of those he killed to protect his throne and his reputation. Go back to 35 BC, his nephew Aristobulus, he was a young high priest, 17 years old. Herod had him drowned. Uh, I, about he was saying later that year, Joseph, his uncle, his own uncle, he had him executed. Then uh, a few years later, Miriam, his favorite wife, whom he was intensely jealous of, he had her uh, knocked off. And on top of that, she had a mother named Alexandra. So why not take care of the mother-in-law too? So he, he executed his own mother-in-law. 
It wasn't long after that where Costabar, his brother-in-law, was executed. Then go further into history, about seven years before Christ, 7 BC, he executed his two sons, Alexander and Aristobulus. Uh, and then one year, a couple years later, 4 BC, his uh, son Antipater was ex executed. Now, Augustus Caesar back then, the one who issued the decree in, chapter, in Luke chapter 1, uh, Augustus, um, uh, he actually made this claim. He said that uh, so brutal was Herod, it was safer to be Herod's pig than to be Herod's son. That's pretty bad, wasn't it? Pretty bad. In fact, he was such a, a nasty, mean guy that when he was on his deathbed, just past 70 years old, which was old in those days, Herod ordered the arrest of leading citizens of the villages, and he was going to have them executed on the moment that he died so that at least there would be tears shed and the nation plunged into mourning, if for nothing else, if those other people died, if they weren't crying for him. That's pretty sad, isn't it? And so when those wise men came to town, with the tale of the birth of a newborn king, Herod pretended to be a worshiper. Herod wanted to worship. He said this, go to Bethlehem, said this to the wise men, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I could go worship him too. Now, we know that Herod didn't want to worship the child. Herod wanted to do the child in. And so we learn that from history that Herod in the Bible flew into a rage when he discovered that he was outwitted by those magi who instead of reporting to him where the Christ child was, went home a different way. Now, um, so Herod gave the order to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and vicinity who were two years old and under. A question tonight. Why would, uh, why would I want to talk about Herod, uh, such a mean and nasty guy on Christmas Eve? In fact, uh, why would we want to mar the beautiful story of the birth of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords with a tale of all this blood and gore? And I wonder why God would even allow Herod into his Christmas story in the first place. And yet think about this. We need to keep Herod. We always say we need to keep Christ in Christmas. We need to keep Herod in the Christmas story. If for nothing else, first of all, Herod reminds us that we live in a very evil and sinful world. A world that still is in need uh, of a savior. Uh, friends, you may have a wonderful Christmas this year. And I sincerely hope that you do. I sincerely hope you do. But there are many people out there whose lives are filled with trouble. And the very last thing on their hearts and minds right now is whether or not they get in the Christmas spirit. You know, we do. As Steve spoke of it earlier. We have a, a lot of people out there living in fear of this uh, pandemic that has manifested itself in many forms and many variants. Uh, on top of that, that I believe that uh, health, pandemic has also served to, to feed the drug epidemic. So there are many people who are taking their own lives today more than ever before because of that. Uh, we look at our schools and other places, there's, there's uh, gangs and drugs and, and, uh, and, 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 and struggles and violence in those settings. And then we look in the newspaper online every day, we see uh, our crime rate on the rise. All right, there's murder, there's theft, and so on and so forth. And then finally, I think our towns, our, our cities are being torn apart uh, because of racial tensions, probably greater than what we've seen in, in decades. And so, friends, listen, uh, there are a lot of people out there who may well, and I hope you do, have a very Merry Christmas. But there are others out there who we remember tonight going through other things where maybe the first thought in their mind is not a vision of peace on earth and goodwill towards Men. But let me tell you something. Jesus didn't come in order to bring us a, 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 a midwinter's festival of peace and contentment. The Son of God wasn't born uh, into uh, this world, this sort of world that we live in, in this placid sort of Christmas card setting, but rather he was born into the sort of world where families wandered homeless and tyrants ruled uh, with deceit and with murder, tyrants like Herod. And, and so tonight, Jesus didn't come into this world to offer us respite 
But instead, he came to save us. He came to die in place of this world. He came to give us two choices, two roads that we could follow. We could either go Herod's way or we could go God's way. We could go the way of the world or we could go the way of Jesus Christ. The Bible says there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to death. It leads to death. And so in the story, Herod was mad, but those wise men were glad because the Bible says, in being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. You ever notice that? They departed by another way. Whose way? Their own way? Whose way? Herod's way? No. They went God's way. They became true worshipers, not pretenders, true followers of the king. So the wise men followed the star from the east. It led them to where the Christ child was. They worshiped, they gave him gifts, and they went back home uh, God's way, another way. They became followers. And so God's only way would be through his one and only son who opened a new and living way through his death his burial, and his resurrection. So tonight, I want you to pause for just a moment. I'm going to give you three important words to go home with, to hang on to. Uh, but before I do that, we're going to light candles in just a few moments. We're going to sing one more song, and then by then, your candles will have been lit. And then after that, we're going to sing Silent Night, Standing Together. And then after that, we invite you to ponder, stay as long as you want, fellowship outside, indoor, uh, but also take your candle home with you. Now, are you ready for the three words? The three first word is this, admit. All of us need to admit that we're sinners. We need to admit that we're sinners. We also need to admit as sinners, we need a savior. The second word is, is to submit. And if you've never given Jesus uh, your life, if you've never given him your life, if you've never surrendered, if you've never confessed him as Lord, if you've never been buried with him in the waters of baptism, then that's the second word, submit. And then the final word I want you to hang on to tonight, tonight is the word commit. I want you to commit your heart to God. Will you do that? Commit your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ and let him change you thoroughly from the inside out. So I want you tonight, as we light these candles, to commit. Commit your heart. Commit your life. Commit your pathways. Commit your way. Commit your, uh, commit your all. Commit your work. Commit your family. Commit your hopes. Commit your fears. Commit your evening. And give it all to the Lord. Let the nations declare His 
stand and sing with us? Be reminded to take the candle home with you and keep the light of Christ shining in your hearts and in your lives, not just today and tomorrow, but throughout the entire new year. So God bless. Let's extinguish our candles and I'll pray. You can keep your candles on until I'm done praying. Father, we're just thankful. Lord, this evening has been yours. Father, we hold these lights forth. And Lord, we're thankful, Father, for Jesus lived a very short life, 33 years. Father, his life was so complete. Lord, you worked in him, with him, uh, Father, to prepare him to be not just a king who came in a cradle, but even a king who died on a cross, and yet one who came forth from a grave victorious. And so we can't celebrate the one season without remembering the other. And Lord, without being reminded tonight that you are the reason for the season, we keep Herod in Christmas, we keep Mary and Joseph in Christmas, we keep the shepherds in Christmas, we keep the wise men in Christmas, but mostly, Father, we keep your son in Christmas, not just today and tomorrow, but throughout the year, in Christ's name, amen. God bless.